Tu du 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 Hello orchid addicts of all various colors and shapes. Welcome to my channel and my name is Leonard. Greetings from Latvia and I'll hope you enjoy your stay. I hope you enjoyed my elaborate introductions and today I wanted to present you with uh, my little Phalaenopsis breeding project that I've recently come up with. I've been wanting to breed and uh, grow Phalaenopsis for quite a number of years now because I've seen videos of other people doing it and I find it very interesting and I'm also a bit of a plant breeding and selecting enthusiast myself that's more or less my scientific speciality that I have been studying in the university and it's also a great passion of mine uh, so far I have been doing it uh, with pansies I will you know put a couple of images up right now so you can see, you know, what I've already been up to. And I would really like to, you know, take this excitement to the next level together with orchids. Orchids are quite tedious uh, to propagate uh, by breeding. Their seeds lack endosperm, which is the seed's food reserves for it to be able to germinate and start growing. So, in wild, uh, Phalaenopsis and other orchids have a very low survival rate of the seeds because their germination is dependent on mycorrhiza, which is a symbiotic relationship with fungi, where the fungi attaches to the newly developed embryo or, you know, roots of the plant and uh, provides it uh, with uh, nutrients in exchange for sap. It's a symbiotic relationship where both of the individuals benefit from one another. But in cultivation, uh, orchid seeds are germinated on a special gel-based medium which is full with nutrients and which is very sterile. And the survival rate of the seeds is much higher. So uh, here you are looking at uh, one of the orchids that I've chosen for the breeding. This is a no ID Phalaenopsis. Uh, which is a Schilleriana hybrid, I suspect. And the other uh, parent is uh, my yellow Phalaenopsis that I identified to be Phalaenopsis Sogo Shito. And forgive me please for the low quality lighting. Today outside is a bit on the more sunny side, it's not entirely gloom and doom. But it's uh, already late afternoon and the sun is setting and by 4pm it's gonna be completely dark. So, uh, a little uh, why I choose these orchids for the breeding project. I'm going to zoom into this this uh, one uh, so you can just see it in better quality lighting uh, for now. Uh, this orchid uh, I've had had for the longest time. It's approximately 14 years old. It's a very typical and very uh, vigorous big uh, Phalaenopsis hybrid which has slight, uh, slight leaf mottling. It creates these big branching flower spikes which are very impressive. It has the medium to small size of the blooms. And it's, you know, always pleased me, you know. It's a very, a very beautiful orchid, I think. Worth breeding because it has quite a bit of vigorosity. It doesn't have any fragrance, though. And this is the other Phalaenopsis which I chose for the breeding project. This is the Sogo Shito. And as you can see it has a very vivid, very distinct golden orange color. The flowers are medium big and they have a thick waxy texture. It's what I would call a novelty hybrid. It also possesses a really pleasant, uh, medium strong, I would say, fragrance of uh, sugary lemons. It's a uh, normal plant it's quite vigorous but right now my individual is quite set back because it has very little roots so the yellow orchid is going to be the father or the pollen donator and the pink one is going to be the mother or the one which produces the seeds 
going to produce the seed pod because it's much more strong so it's much more capable of actually producing seeds while the yellow one would certainly not survive it that well as you can see my pink one is already starting to fade and I think this is either because of uh, too little water uh, or it is because of too little sunlight but I have nothing against it. I think I'll pollinate one of the younger flowers here. Uh, so, you know, they have higher chances of surviving and starting to produce seeds. Okay, uh, now I want to talk about what I envision. What traits I want the offspring of these two Phalaenopsis to have. It is known that uh, while breeding Phalaenopsis, if you combine the pink and the yellow color, you can obtain shades similar to red. That's really exciting. But also, while breeding orchids, there usually you can obtain a very wide range of variation in the offspring, especially if the parents are hybrids, as these are. So, what I'm basically looking for is for very uh, floriferous, abundant branching uh, flowering uh, pattern and their uh, offspring, orange to red color blooms, mottled leaves, big leaf span, of course vigorous growth. I'm genuinely speaking very curious about what I'll get from this. This is going to be a learning process which I'm going to endeavor right now so, I wouldn't be surprised with a certain degree of failure. But in any case, I'm very excited uh, for learning how to grow orchids from seeds and seeing what I get in the end. I choose Phalaenopsis specifically because these orchids are very grateful for breeding uh, because they can grow to mature flowering size from the early age of four years. So you can see the results of your labor very quickly and that is quick for orchids. Now I'm going to talk about a little of the actual breeding and raising process. Orchids have two gendered flowers. As you can see, this orchid has a column, an extension of the flower on the top of which there is this yellow orange pollen. And beneath this column there is an opening where the pollen is supposed to be insected. So I'm going to take the pollen of this yellow one and insect it in the flower of the pink one. And in about uh, three months the seeds will be ready for harvesting and I'm going to make updates about once every month. So without hesitation let's uh, give you a demo. Sorry if this is going to be a bit awkward but so I'm taking a regular toothpick you can see and I'm taking the pollen yeah this is how you take the pollen this is the pollen cap in which there is the pollen I'm gonna take it off and be right back this is the flower which I decided to use as the mother flower here you can see the pollen and I'm going to insert it here it's going to be a bit difficult for me to do with my hands busy, so I'm gonna come back when it is done. As you can see, I've inserted the pollen of the father into the stigma. So, uh, now I'm going to update you in approximately a month uh, to show you the progress of the seed pod and update on the parents. Now, a little thing to mention about uh, pollinating orchids. Once you remove the pollen of the flower, the flower might start to fade quickly and fall off and once a flower is pollinated it's going to immediately start producing the seed pod and appear like it's wilting and also while the orchid is producing its seeds it will it will you know direct most of its energy into the seed production so don't expect any new growth or you know uh, new flowers to come from that orchid unless it's really grown in good conditions for it. So I hope you enjoyed my little poorly lit uh, video with my poor camera. If you uh, like this video and found it educational, leave a like. 
if you want to share your experiences and give advice, don't be afraid to leave a comment below this video. If you want to see more of this kind of videos from me, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you soon. Bye!